Hello and welcome to the Eurovision Nutcut. Uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Eurovision Nutcase podcast, the podcast where I talk about Eurovision and drive everyone crazy in the process. I'm Patrick, your Eurovision expert. And I'm Harry, your Eurovision non-expert. Eurovision non-expert. Are you going to change it up each week or just keep it, you know, simple? I don't know. I feel like our listeners want consistency. Yeah, but I, I, if they want consistency, they've chosen the wrong fucking channel to turn into. Are you calling our listeners stupid? No, I'm not calling them stupid. That's what I thought, Patrick. I'm 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 setting expectations, you know? I'm saying that we're not consistent because we'll just go on random tangents about shit. Okay. Anyways. Should we just call it the random tangent podcast? No, because okay. that's a completely different podcast. Mm, let's do that. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, Hello. we're talking about Eurovision today. Yes, we are talking about Eurovision. So we're back. We're back. Second episode. Second how are you episode. Fe- how are you feeling after the last one? Like I can make a career out of this. <laughs> Is that your dream? <laughs> to make a career out of doing podcasts about something that you know nothing about? Well, my dream is just to win the lottery or something and then just... Yeah, know. the amount of times that we have left work and you say to me like, you know what, I hope we win the Euromains tonight. Um, it'd be nice, you know, it's a nice little dream to have. It's a nice little dream to have, but, you know... What Free are the money chances... handed to you, it's a good thing. Yeah, but then, what are the chances of you winning the lottery? Extremely unlikely. Thank you. It's not because it's you, it's mathematically, Harry. Oh, about. mathematically, I know. But why are we talking about the Euro Millions <laughs> when we're talking about Eurovision, well, Patrick? I mean, Eurovision, Euro Millions, they both have Euro in the name. Yes, so does the Euro train. You're a star? Yeah. European Union? European Union. <laughs> what, what do you want? Is this just going to call it the Europe podcast? <laughs> we voted for Brexit, Patrick, and we should stick with Brexit. Oh, don't even Even bring, though that's going don't, so well. Don't bring that fucking conversation in, because yeah. I will... We'll do, how, I, about, how about we, next week we do a politics podcast? Oh, fuck that. This has been an exciting week for uh, Eurovision fans, because last night... Uh, was nicknamed Super Saturday. And the reason for that was because seven countries, not one, not two, seven of them, uh, chose their entries last night via a national final. Um, I didn't watch every single one of them because that was virtually impossible. Um, But... So does that mean their countries voted? Yes. For the acts that they're submitting? Yes. So there's that. Some of them also had like um, a jury of some sorts, whether that was an international jury or an internal jury or something like that. I'm not too certain. Mm -hmm. Um, They all have their own different formats. Um, And there were definitely some surprising winners, like some people that predicted, some that were very, from what I could gather, left field. Um, But I suppose that's one of the joys of Eurovision is that you never know what's going to come out. Um, but we're not going to talk about all eight entries that came out, um, this week, just because next week, I think only Lithuania is confirmed to confirm what their entry is, unless if we get like a surprise thing. So we're going to do six so that we at least have some content for next week. Yes. Um, and yes, the six no, no. will, and the six we'll talk about will be in, uh, all decided by Harry here. What do you mean? Oh. So here are the... So obviously none of you can see this, but I have here a little slide of the eight countries that chosen their entries uh, this week, which were Croatia, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Italy, Latvia, Malta, and Romania. And now the fate of which ones we'll listen to is in the hands of Harry. If you could change your fate, would you? <laughs> How long were you sitting on making that quote? <laughs> Alright, I, ho- I, ho- I hope others find that funny, because I'm, I mean, just, I'm, ju- I'm look, just sitting there I, going, no. Look, I don't need validation from anybody else, because good. I think I'm fucking hilarious, okay, in my opinion. That's good. That's good. Anyway, so do you want to put the headphones on? You might have to turn the, vo- the volume just in case if it's a bit too loud. Okay. Yeah, it's got to hear it over you. Um, you know what? Let's go for Croatia. Oh, I don't int- know why. I just got a good feeling about it. Interesting choice. Well, so it's first on the list, so I'm just like, over it. 
Okay, so we're going to listen to Croatia first. A brave choice, I must say. Um, this is um, a band called Let Free. Let that the number three. Yeah, Let Free. Is there three of them? Um, no, there, I don't think there's three of them. I think there's like five or something. Why are they called Let Free? I don't know. Okay. I don't know everything. I thought you know everything about Eurovision. I know everything about Eurovision, but I don't know everything about this band. But they're in Eurovision. Do you remember that? They were selected last night, so, you know. It's, I... it's called Wikipedia. Wikipedia doesn't have the answer to everything. But it nearly does. For fuck's sake. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is Light Free, wrong. and the song is called Mama Sh. Mama Sh. Yeah, Mama Sh. It's in Croatian, so I mean? don't. I don't know. Oh my god, Google these next time. Oh, it's not playing on here. Give me a second. Please stand by. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Shut your Your trap. call is important to us. <laughs> shut Please lift it, listen to the soothing music. Oh, shut uh, uh, this, <laughs> Let me give you some soothing music to listen to. Oh, here we go. Oh, God. It looks like a bunch of World War Two armies have just made it on stage, but have had a fashion crisis. <laughs> I was about to say that the Beatles Sergeant Pepper's only house club band has had. Yeah. Has really oh, that is the, the worst fake moustache ever. <laughs> I have no words yeah. for what I'm witnessing. Oh, they're collapsing on stage. What? Oh, my God. They've been, t they've been tasered. The cameraman can't stay still. What is this? I'm just saying as well, that moustache is a bit too... Ooh. If it was a bit shorter, we'd be comparing him to some really bad fascist. Mm hmm What is this, like, oh, sound they're making? What is this, like, little routine they got? It's like their own Macarena. <laughs> oh. <laughs> have they bought nukes on the stage? They're missiles! Why have they got nuclear missiles? Are they stripped? <laughs> Fucking hell, they're stripped! I'm assuming this is some sort of, like, political message on, like, war and stuff. If it's a political message, I, like, I don't know. I mean, the other guys just to took off their coats yet. and, like, threw them off in, like, an elaborate display. This guy just unbuttoned it. Not even, like, seductively. Yeah. <laughs> Not that you want him to be seductive. So those missiles are, like, shooting out sparks. It's like something Katy Perry would do on her breasts. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what it kind of reminded me of. Um, so, that was Croatia. Okay. Um, talk talk I me through it. Well, I assume it's some sort of message against, like, war and stuff. That's what um, I thought. I'm I not quite sure what the message is, like, because obviously I do not understand the language. Um, oh shit, Sherlock. Yep, thank you. Um, but literally, uh, I assume it's all about doing your your duty as a soldier and stuff like that, because there's like they're very like heavy on the saluting, like the guy's saluting at the end here, and that. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they're trying to like make a reference to that World War Two because I feel like what what they're wearing is like a crime on fashion but it reminds me very much of that World War Two sort of era clothes and like Eastern European sort of stuff mm -hmm. so for all I know this could be a dig against Putin right now we don't know we don't, I don't know. know but the thing is, is that if this was a dig against Putin then the EBU would have already come out with a statement or would have basically oh, so it's not. to change okay. there no. because you have to remember that Eurovision is an apolitical show so they can't have a political if message if it was apolitical why did why are Russia not in it then it, because so here's the thing I don't even remember this from last year but originally the EBU weren't going to ban Russia from the contest but a lot of countries basically said like if you don't ban them we're not going to participate in Eurovision this oh. year or something like that so they kind of by pressure had to do it but then also you know Russia well, they're not very apolitical then <laughs> Well, they had. To, that was the only time where they basically couldn't be apolitical. Yeah. But for the most part, they try to be apolitical. Okay. They don't try to. Have um. Them. I mean, that, that, uh, let's put it out this way: it's not gonna win. <laughs> it's not. Uh, if that wins, I have given up. Okay. So I've just looked up basically the background of the song. So I'm literally just going to read this out from Wikipedia. According to a Croatian newspaper, it's inspired by the first letter of the oldest alphabet in the world, which is where the sh comes sh from. Um, sh it's an anti-war song. It's anti-war. Um, okay. Uh, there was a war message. I was right. Apparently, after the total Armageddon has been waged on Earth, 
Um, a rocket would land on Earth containing the letters SH, which is, again, explains probably why the rockets were on stage. Okay. As a reference to that. Apparently, they also claim that the lyrics um, mean to sound that is that someone makes when somebody orgasms, a blood type, or a sound someone makes when they are meditating. Again, I have no words. <laughs> um, so, obviously, this is, it's very evocative. It's very shocking. And mm -hmm. it feels like a fever dream. That's the only way that I can describe it. It's like, you can't quite conceive of what you have just witnessed. Um, this band, actually, Let Free, they've been around for a very long time in both Croatia and kind of other for, uh, former Yugoslav republics. I think they formed in the late 80s. Oof. So they've been around for quite some time. Oh, um, now, they're part of a genre which I think is like kind of uh, like, I think it's called shock rock or something. Their songs usually, from what I gather, are quite vulgar and not known for having like shocking performances with nudity, which okay. the EBU will have a field day over because obviously we can't have nudity yeah. on a family po program. <laughs> um, what I will say is that... Say family program, and be on late at night and the kids will be in bed. Well, yeah, but even <laughs> still, I think the idea is like, you know, it's, fa it's family yeah. friendly to an extent. Um, I will say it is unlike any other Eurovision entry I have seen in a very long time, and I've been doing this for almost two decades now. Um, I almost want it to qualify to the final, just out of, like just seeing the general public's reaction to it because mm. um we're gonna have like you know yeah. a viewing party in a house which we usually do as a tradition and obviously we don't talk about eurovision to anybody else so i just want to see their reactions to this entry yeah. because it is like a what the fuck moment i mean i love to see, i love to see liverpool's reaction when those missiles get carted in <laughs> it's your choice what do you go oh, for czech republic i'm just gonna go down the list you're just gonna go down the just list, go down okay. the list. Okay, well, you might change your mind. No, I'm committing. Eh. Um, we'll see. Um, so next up is Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. This is a song called My Sister's Crown by a band called Vesna. My Sister's Crown. Vesna? Vesna. I thought you said Vesna, and I'm like, why are we he's diversified from Stranger Things? <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't look like a horrible history actors. <laughs> No, I'm sticking with it. Horrible history actors, so we're like... Horrible history actors? Yeah. Are you just waiting for them to basically do, what is it, the monarchy song? Maybe. William, William, Henry... Oh, it's English now. I feel like it's something like pro women sort of thing. Maybe like down with the patriarchy thing, vibe. Yeah. I'm, it... get, I'm getting... Yeah, like you'd be right to assume that. I have to say, I'm obsessed with the aesthetic, even if it's Yeah, really... no, it, it looks good. I hope that they keep with this same aesthetic for the actual Eurovision stage. I mean, obviously, this is like, panned out like a, this is like a music video. So they're not going to have to recreate it on the stage, at you best they can. Yeah, but I hope aesthetically they can keep it similar to this. So I'm just getting the sense this is just like women being oppressed by men and stuff like that in... Yeah, it's kind subtle of subtle and not so subtle ways. Yeah, it's oh, there's like six of them. I thought there was three of them. Yeah, no, thought... there's six of them. I thought they were just changing makeup and that, but no, there's six of them. The way they're looking at the TV and singing, it's like very nineteen fifties. Like, are you sitting comfortably? Good. Yeah, <laughs> then we'll begin. Then we sort will of begin. vibes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is very. Um... I get the impression it's women, um, wo I don't know what to say. Women are being oppressed or women empowerments. Uh, they bring down the patriarchy sort of vibes. I'm yeah. getting. Uh, I'm not quite sure what angle they're it's, going for. It's kind of like women and female empowerments. Yeah. Um, protesting against gender equality. They said... Um, For in, gender equality. No, against gender inequality. Oh, inequality. So yeah, equality. basically saying that you can't have support from other people and on the subject of equality, it's not just between women, but everyone. There was probably a lot of clever metaphors that went right over my head and stuff like that. Mm. But I got the general sense in that. Um, and it's all like for equality and stuff like that, and women's yeah. rights and that. As far um, as the song itself, though... Oh, like, I liked it. It was kind of like catching up beat and then there's that nice little rap bit and I was just kind of like, 
you know. It, yeah. It, 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 I liked I liked the song. Yeah. And uh, um, so I'll be interested to see how they perform that on stage live. Yeah. Uh, I could see that getting through to the final quite easily. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that um, I'd be quite. I think if it is as good as the music video comes out, I think yeah. this is definitely going to be a qualifier. But I do feel like it runs that problem Ireland had last week, of like, you know, like unity and all that together was their message. Their message is kind of like, um, well, equal rights for women and stuff like that, and. The problem with these messages these days in society is yes, we need to talk about them so we get better society. I feel this but is also, more... but also we talk about them a lot. Yeah, know? but so that's, it's kind of like wrong with you kind of like we need to talk about them, but at the same time, it's like can we talk about something else? Yeah, you but know then I mean? like I think because because uh, I would disagree in the sense that like I like a song about like equality and that kind of stuff. I think this is more effective, in my opinion, than a song mm. like Ireland. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. This, first one, this one's ranked up higher than Ireland. Yeah. First and foremost, um, you mentioned that, like, you kind of said, like, oh, they're now speaking English. The song is actually in four languages. Ooh. English, Ukrainian, Czech, and Bulgarian. And the main reason for that is that some of the members are from the Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. I think one's oh, from... Oh, it's quite a diverse Yeah, team. one's and... from Bulgaria, one's from Slovakia, one is from Russia, and they also worked with a Ukrainian songwriter for the song. Um, okay. I would say this is kind of similar to Spain in terms of subject matter, with the whole thing about female empowerment and sisterhood. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I, I mean. Like, okay, oh, it's the same message. Again, like, yeah, but I think I feel like do it's quite like unique the way they've done it. Yeah, but at the same I time, think, it's like mm, same yeah. message. I think though, in my opinion, this if the signing and the execution is really thought through and kind of done similarly to this, I mm. think it could be, in my opinion, more effective than Spain. Yeah, like I'm obsessed with the aesthetic, uh, uh and for almost that, like kind of almost yeah. looking like freaks from a circus kind of a thing, um. I like the folky elements. I like that it's multilinguistic. I like. I liked it. Although the beginning part, they did look like I say again, whole history actors. <laughs> you know, that what I mean? is a reference that like if somebody outside of Europe is not going to know. I don't know. You never know. Those books might be popular outside the UK. That is true. The horrible history books. And that's... Um, but yeah, I think the century has a lot of potential, and I think Czech Republic should definitely be seen as a dark horse. For this competition. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Uh, that, that that one could easily do quite well. What next? Denmark. Denmark. Okay. I'm committing to the list it's in. Fair enough. If if that's the way you want to go about it. Um. So now we move on to Denmark. Then, based on your decision, mm -hmm. this is "Breaking My Heart" by Riley. It's just not really special, I guess. I quite like the sound of it. Do you know what? I like, it, yeah. Do you know like, what it reminds me of? Troy Sivan? Kind of Troy Sivan, <laughs> yeah. It's very Troy Sivan. It sounds like a kind of song you would hear in the background of like an episode of Heartstopper. You know, like Nick and Charlie yeah, are going yeah, yeah, for no, a date. No, no. I, I get that. Like, it's like a kind of like a decent upbeat pop song and that. Yeah. Um, But it's not like, whoa! Yeah, no, it's not a whoa kind of song, but I think it. Uh, I I personally really like it. I ra I I I'd rank this similar to Ireland's, where it's literally like it's not good. It's not like wow wow, but it's not bad. It's kind of like it's okay. I mean, I would go as far as to say it's, it's bit, good. Yeah, I would listen to this yeah. like uh, I would, I, I would say this. like it's like a, a, it's okay. You know, this is your one shot as a country to win your mission. I feel like it needs to have a wow factor. But like, what factor. they do with the staging could really make this performance transcend. I mean, I will say this, he said broken heart, like, mmm, breaking heart. Like, he said that a lot. Well, I mean, the song is called Breaking My Heart, so I'd be I know, but didn't. I feel like he just said it a lot. Mm. So you don't, you don't think, you don't think highly of it, but you don't. Think I don't it's think it's bad. bad. Like I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with it, but there's nothing like impressive about it. It's like whoa, and that. I mean, he can, he's, he can sing. I, I think that it's a good song, but it's not a wow song. Yeah. So, I it, mean, 
here's the thing about Denmark. Denmark like... recently haven't had really a great track record in, in terms of, like, qualification. I think the last time that I was really into a Danish entry was probably 2018, I want to say. Uh, but no, I mm. personally really like this. Um, he's all, uh, This person, um, Riley, um, is also a TikTok star and has been doing covers on there for, like, quite a bit. And I think he's one oh. of the youngest, if not the youngest, at the moment. He's 20. Okay. So I think, like, in my opinion, from when I watched so on it... TikTok. So I bet he could get a lot of votes then from yeah. the public if he's, like, yeah. a TikTok star. To me, uh, to me, I feel like despite him being quite young there's like a natural kind of confidence in his performance like it doesn't feel yeah, show off no, no, which if yeah. there was a show off element of like it that like, would turn me off he performed it like a champ um I feel the performance needs of maybe like if he did a bit more dance you know like yeah. I feel like he'd either slow it down a bit go in for more of the emotion or make a bit more of a show of it like it'd be a bit more performing you know yeah. but it's kind of that in between stage at the moment where I'm just kind of like just kind of well, yeah. bopping along to the music and he's got the dancers around him and it's like nah mate join in with them yeah. or do carry remember, that emotion of the yeah. song do you remember not all singers are dancers I know but he's got a few moms he can learn them. oh yeah no I'm pretty sure like you could give him choreography to learn he's got what and do. four months basically well three, it's three, in May he's so got three like, months just under three months or something you, like that yeah but you got three months to just learn yeah. one choreography yeah you I mean, do it. that's the thing is that, that, you know, I, you know, I think overall, I personally really like the song. I think it could make it to the final at least. I think, it, I think not, there's a good chance it will. There's a good chance it Compared will. Compared to some of the rubbish we've seen so far. <laughs> from last week. From last week, Jesus Christ. Let's go on to Estonia. Estonia, that's what I thought you would say. Yes. Um, this is Bridges. With Bridges. The, uh, yeah, the song is called Bridges, and it's by wait, Elika. Wait, wait, let me guess the, that they want to build bridges and bring people together. Is that the message of the song? Let's find out. Oh, I'm bet I'm right. Should have bet money. Shit, the piano's playing itself. It's like some gothic Poltergeist. <laughs> Poltergeist. <laughs> Sounds all right. She reminds me of one of my secondary school teachers, though. So why has she switched from... Having the piano play itself to playing it itself. Did they? Could they only hire the ghost for so long? <laughs> okay, so it's more about a personal relationship. Hmm. It's the okay. What I don't like about it is the backup singers I can hear but not see. Where are they going? <laughs> Every now and then. I think the la- I think the last couple of years there was a rule in relation to backup singers, but I think that was because of the COVID pandemic. I don't know if they're going to change that moving forward. Oh, uh, might change it. Just get a bit more lively. I like I'm liking this. That's not bad. It's not bad. Not bad. Um. No. It's, um, it's very I well sung. I feel like it's the, it's very well sung. Uh, it's the same as Denmark before. I feel like it's a good song. It's good. Mm-hmm. Alright. It's. It's just overall okay, good. Just nothing like whoa, like I don't know what the message is of that piano playing itself. I feel like there's a metaphor in there that I'm not seeing. There's probably a metaphor, but I maybe maybe this is me being. I feel like it felt more just it's a relationship. Is it a relationship that's gone wrong from and they've broken up? What I could gather from the lyrics, yes. And that, and I'm feeling like maybe the piano's playing itself is the other half, and it's like building bridges between them. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I, I. I mean, I, I can. I can understand some of the lyrics, obviously. And that was it all in English. Some of it was in English. It was all in English. It was an all in English. <laughs> Fuck! Oh my god! I really need to pay attention. <laughs> you really need to pay attention. I don't know. I just kind of, I just kind of focus on things. I don't really hear the words. Like as soon as that piano was playing itself, I were not listening to the lyrics. And uh, um, I am the best Do person to review this. <laughs> was it all in English? I'm never gonna live this down. <laughs> So, <laughs> come on, Patrick, carry on. <laughs> oh, 
fuck. That has made my day. You have no idea. Um, You're welcome. It's very much a, a power ballad. Um, it was predicted to win based on the Eurofans, if, based on the songs that were eligible for that national final, so it wasn't a surprise when okay. she won. Um, I would debate that I think, yeah, you could say on one hand it's about a relationship, but I think it does also have to do with some sort of relation to the Russian invasion, because... Alika is actually Russian with Estonian roots and when the whole war came out she was very devastated about it and she basically wants to use her kind of native background as a way to help integrate different communities and create mutual understanding. Mm. So I think like there's a, I suppose a lot of different ways that you could read the song and like what it's about and I think it like there is power behind what she's singing. Basically I know it's a uh... Everyone just let's all come together and build bridges. Oh yeah, exactly. Sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. good message. Positive so message and she's and you know like she's very talented and I think this would be very much a s- very strong vocal performance if she doesn't like overdo it. Yeah. In terms of the song, doesn't, however, doesn't, doesn't do like the James Arthur did. Yeah. Uh, I think it's is it James Arthur or James Newman? I think you're mistaking him for the X Factor winner. Yes, James Newman, and you're it's right. It's James Newman, yeah. Because we had a good song and that, but when it came to the show... It's the just staging like, was cat. His, his voice sounded tired. It was And it was, like, cat. used, yeah. We, um, we, that was not a good year for us. In terms of this song... No points <laughs> to Gryffindor. I'm sorry, zero points. Zero points. Um, in terms of this song, however, I don't care for it. Like that, like if it was a person, I wouldn't piss on it if it was on fire. Like Jesus Christ, it's well, so all those nice things. So here's the thing: it's a power ballad that has been done to death. And yeah. when you've been watching and studying Eurovision for as long as I have, you have heard a m- uh, uh, many uh, power ballads. So in just in my like, I'm not saying that this song is bad because it isn't. It mm. is good. I've just, I've heard so many power ballads over the years, and I think there are so many of them that do this better. Yeah. In my opinion. Okay. Oh, yeah, like the uh, Greases died together last year. That was brilliant. That was a better ballad. That was brilliant. It was unfortunate that it was in a sea of ballads that year. Yeah. Because if it wasn't in, if we didn't have as many ballads, Greece would have absolutely yeah. been Yeah, it wasn't even a ballad that won overall as well. No, it wasn't um, a bad Anyway, thing. next one. We are going to Italy. Italia. Um, so this Spaghetti. Is... <laughs> Jesus Christ. So yeah, it's... I just said an Italian thing in an accent. I apologise. So this is uh, Due Viti, uh, which translates to Two Lives. Mm. Um, and it's by a guy called Marco Mengoni. Marco. Yeah, Marco. 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 So we got Marco. I hope that's not real leather he's wearing. I think it's faux, but it could I could be wrong. It's definitely singing in Italian. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not gonna Italy... make, I'm, I'm not gonna make a fool of myself like last of the song. <laughs> Italy tend to usually sing in Italian. Oh, got a good voice. I like it. Mm. It's a better it's a better ballad than ones we've heard already. Yeah. This is it, it's another power ballad, but I yeah. think this one has more grit. Yeah. It builds as well. It builds as a ballad. And he ca- his voice is doing it well. Lo- yeah. And the music as well. The vocals so. are unbelievably... I would say yeah. probably... He's definitely like this the strongest... Better than the, this is better than the year entry last year, from what I remember. Oh. Uh, that, the, those two, that duo. That du- See, here's the thing, because I salivated over the Italian entry last year when I first heard it. I thought mm. it was absolutely beautiful. And then when they performed it on the night, it was a massive disappointment. Yeah. Because that entry last year from Italy should have been better than what it, it than what it. Well, I think like you have the high expectations because they won it. They won it last time. It wasn't even that. It was such a fantastic song that they yeah. had, and both the the people that were singing it both sounded very tired. And... He's really going for it. His voice is so good. Oh, he is one of the strongest vocalists. Yeah. Definitely one of the strongest he's, male vocalists. I don't... Uh, strongest vocus all he's probably round, got the, don't know. He's probably got the best voice I've heard out of all the entries so far. Bear in mind, saying that, and I do not understand Italian well enough to understand this song. Mm. So, I think that says a lot when you've got... When you can... Well, you know, when you can tell they are going for it and they've got a great voice. 
you don't. But you yeah. don't understand what they're saying. It but doesn't matter because he's it's still. He's still carrying it through, even though people, I don't understand his language. Mm. And I think, right, that's pops to his showmanship there. Yeah. So, Marco Mengoni, mm -hmm. this is not his first rodeo to Eurovision. Oh, he's done it before? He's done it before, actually 10 years ago in 2013. How old is he now then? So, I think he's like in his mid-30s, oh. something like that. Oh, um, that's good for his 30s. But yeah, he came 7th. 7th? Seven. Last time that oh, he did this. so he does better this time. So, yeah, well, I mean, here's the thing. Italy take this shit Seriously. They, you know, no, no, they go it's for a it. yeah. really go pedal to the metal yeah. for Eurovision. Like, I think... Except last year. I, I see, I was going to say, I would also say last year, up until their performance. But no, since returning to Eurovision 2011, they have been in the top ten nine times. Nine times. Four of which they were in the top three. And of course they won with Mana Skin um, oh, yeah. a few years ago as well. Mm. Um... To me, this song is no exception. It's one of the strongest yeah. vocal performances this year, thus far. It's emotive, it's powerful, Could it's be a winner. strong. It... See, I would say, I wouldn't say a winner at the moment. Well, I wouldn't well, say well, it's my favourite well, Italian we say, entry I've we say, we, uh, like I say it could be a winner. Bear could in mind, be a winner. I've not heard, we, there's still loads to be announced in that. So like, yeah. this could be amazing, but from now on, they could all be yeah. like really good and this one could be put to shame because of it so you know yeah. it's a bad I think it's on balance i think it'll be a jury favorite for sure yeah public i think they might get behind it to an extent depending on what else is there mm. i think it has potential to definitely have a top 10 finish yeah um i mean obviously they're going to be in the final because they're part of the big five so they don't have to worry oh about yeah we're not going to see the else. semi-finals yeah yeah um i would say this is one of my favorite entries that was confirmed this week, if not my favourite, of the new entries. Um, like, I would still say, in my opinion, Norway is, like, my top, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, but yeah. this one is a very close second. Oh. I think it's very... I think no, it's no. good. I, I, yeah. They're, 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 I can't say anything bad about it, really. Yeah, There's it's just bad. really it's good. A, it's a good like, performance. God damn it, Italy. Why are Italy so good at this? Um, I don't know. Do they vote by the public? Uh, I think theirs was a combination of jury and public. Okay, well, between them, they're getting it right. They're getting it right. On to Latvia. Yes. The last one of our episode. So that means that Malta and Romania, which we won't talk about this week. We will mm. talk about them next week, but we'll talk yes. about Latvia today. This is Aja by Southern Lights, and I will let you know this now. Is Aja a name? No. And, well, Aja can be a name, okay, but it's, so, not, yeah. it's not a name. Oh, no, okay, not a reference to this, okay. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm going to let you know this now. It is both in English and Latvian. I make one mistake. Yeah, but I, I feel like you best know now because you said that you need to pay attention more. Yeah, I know. But yeah, the, so the song is called Aja and it's by a band called Sudden Lights. What are you thinking at the moment? Uh, it's all right. It's kind of like a... Again, Indie rock vibe, sort of getting from it. Yeah, yeah, it's very indie rock. I mean, it's uh, it's a good sign that when even the rest of the band members are still giving the role and they're just playing instruments and not singing, but mm. they, you can tell they're giving it their energy. That's a good thing. Yeah, no, that is a good sign. I think it's gonna be one of those songs where this is a decent song, mm -hmm. perform well. It's really gonna come down to how they perform it on the day. Mm. Where has the lead singer gone off to? He just ran off stage or something. Oh no, he's gonna he's gonna get a guitar for himself. You already just said fuck this shit, I'm out. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be some dramatic costume change. No, he just came back with a guitar. This is the kind of song where I feel like in a live audience this would it's just gonna this will do well. Mm. Especially just then when it's slowed down and you just like the raw emotion of the song. Yeah. Um, I feel like that will this will this will do well for the people in the room. I think that's translating on, onto for the screen. Um, I just think like it's just really going to depend on how well they stage it because they have something there. Yeah. Um, they've just got to get that stage performance. Yeah, right I think on the like day. kind of similarly with entries like um, Slovenia and Czech Republic and all that stuff. 
But I think like they have so much potential mm. to do so much with it. Well, yeah. not necessarily so much of it, but for it to be a real, not showstopper, they, but something they, special. If they, on if this they do this right, they could get in the final and maybe go a bit further. Yeah. I mean, you know, this song was very much a journey. Like, it really felt like you're kind of taken on a ride. Yeah. And, and I like it in an odd way. I It does, like, I have kind of heard some, not a lot, some critiques saying that it does feel like three separate songs that kind of get mushed together. Mm. And one of them doesn't really translate or flow as well as, you know, you, you, it, as you would hope. But I like the concept. I It feels like you're kind of in a rock concert. Yeah, yeah, like they, 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 like they, like I said, they're the rock indie vibe in a bar, yeah, rock indie band, and they've definitely got that vibe and yeah. that energy, and they perform it well, and this kind of it's quite a popular genre these days that is as well. So they've the got, indie they're, rock. They're, they're, they could they could, yeah, yeah, they could get they could get, um, they could get far with this, yeah. The thing is that I don't really have a lot of notes on the song. They said in an interview that they wanted this song to be like a distraction for the listeners in regards to all the bad things happening in the world at the moment. They also said that they wanted to give this song like a lullaby effect. Oh, they definitely achieved that at take the end. What you, so, yeah, yeah, take what you will from that. It's um, kind of like a, you know, swaying your torches or phone lights in the, in yeah. the, in the audience sort of vibe. Yeah. I'm on the fence if it will qualify or not it really yeah. it really depends i think it's most likely it's more likely going to compared to some of the other songs so it's but, in yeah. so to clarify this is in a semi-final with ireland croatia um norway and czech republic so i think i think it probably will I think it really depends on what else comes out from that kind of semi-final, but mm. it's kind of sitting in the middle for me in between that, because I don't think it's as good as Czech Republic or Norway, but I would rather listen to this yeah. and think this is more of an interesting song than Ireland. And I mean, Croatia does have that kind of shock factor, which I think audiences might lap up, but... We'll see. Yeah. Obviously, you don't know what the Maltese or the Romanian entries are like, and you'll find out. Not until next week. Not until next week. But I Like and subscribe, guys. (laughs) But I want you to guess, because obviously you found out from last week, you knew that Norway was topping the charts with Belgium being at the bottom. Where do you think the entries that you've heard today have basically landed? Uh, I think Italy are probably number one. Okay. Uh, and I think at the other end, it's... At the other end, it's probably Czech Republic, I imagine, or Croatia. It's Croatia. Croatia yeah. are at the bottom. Yeah. Ireland have dropped. Like, they're now... So, obviously, I'm not going to tell you where Romania and Malta sit. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Ireland are now second to bottom. Ooh. So they've done worse than Belgium because last week they were like a couple of spaces above Belgium and yeah. now below it. Well, that's what I mean. Like their entry was just kind of like meh. Mm. Um, then it's Latvia. Oh, Latvia's last. No, Latvia's third from bottom at the uh, moment. Okay, this one. Yeah. Uh, um, nah, I reckon. Well, this only got revealed yesterday, didn't it? Yeah. I reckon in a few days this will start climbing a bit more. Okay. Not top of it, but a bit more. I yeah. Reckon. Uh, then is Albania, mm-hmm. then Belgium, Denmark, yep. Ukraine. That's surprising. Yeah. Estonia. Yeah, no, no. That's Slovenia. It. Yep. Italy just missed out on the top three. Ooh. Yeah, he's not on the top three. Then you have Spain in third, Czech Republic, the highest new entry. Which one um, is theirs again? It's the da, 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 the sisters. My sister. Oh yeah, sister, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I That's literally second, yeah. And Norway is still topping the charts. Yeah, no, yeah. Those two are definitely the highest ones at the five. Yeah. I agree. Norway to uh, me. I would pick Italy in third personally, but it's not. It's in the top five. That's still good. Yeah, to me, yeah. like Norway, as far as I'm concerned, are still running away with it. Obviously, we yeah. still have twenty. The problem more I think entries. is with Norway and Czech Republic is. In some ways, the message of the song is very similar. It's very pro 
female empowerment and stuff. And I feel like you've got two songs which are really good, really well performed, great singers and everything, mm -hmm. and they've got similar messages. It's it's like in the gaming world, you know you know Overwatch. Yeah. Big big popular game in that. There was another game that came out at a similar time called Battleborn. Yeah. Nobody remembers it. Mm -hmm. And that because it was a very similar game to Overwatch, and it literally dropped in value. It tanked. Yeah, it was like um, what's a reference you get? Um, I don't know. It's like like Liz Truss <laughs> didn't go far, didn't last yeah. long. And I feel like what that could happen with one of these is so they're so similar is one could just go, or they could bring each other down. True. So it I would depends what gets announced in the next few weeks. Yeah, I would debate though with n the reason why I would prefer Norway over Czech Republic, or why I do actually prefer Norway over Czech Republic, is because I think Czech Republic is definitely definitely very experimental and definitely more yeah. interesting. Norway, I think, is just I think it's more your typical Eurovision like kind of entry. There is a determination about yeah. it. There's a confidence about it. The singing so, is very good. Are we saying at the moment uh, I our, would fa our favourites are Czech and Norway? I would say... See, I would put Italy a lot higher, in my opinion. I would definitely put Italy, the like, Personally, I think, or I think I prefer Czech Republic over Norway, personally. Yeah. So, Just because I feel like they were a bit more quirky. Yeah. And had a bit more my underdog is from. my underdog is Slovenia. I don't think Slovenia will win, but I personally really like the Slovenian yeah. entry. I would say Latvia. They're, they're my underdogs. They could they could easily that that could easily be something yeah. I could see. Not maybe not winning, but definitely picking up speed. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, so next so next week we we'll talk about Malta and Romania first because yep. we didn't talk about them this week. Um, Lithuania are the only country that have confirmed that they'll be choosing their entry next, next week, week as well. Yeah. Um, we don't know about, because there's a few countries that are choosing their songs kind of internally, so there hasn't been any announcement of when they'll be releasing their songs. So if any of them release it next week, then we'll talk about them. But that is going to conclude today's episode. Again, um, if you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, comment below, any video suggestions or what your thoughts on these entries um and keep it respectful because oh please do you know where it because you know these are just our own opinions we're not speaking on behalf yeah. of all of europe um but yeah so give us a like click subscribe don't forget to ring the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time that we post a new video but that is going to do yep. it today i've been patrick and i'm harry and, and we still don't have a sponsor yet <laughs> And we're not going to have a sponsor, for fuck's sake. Um, but no, have a good evening. Take care. Goodbye. Bye.